Christianity employs when it avowed the belief in a God who has an earthly body as well as a Holy Spirit and a heavenly manifestation. For that model, we have seen is a perfectly Jewish one. So my question is, first question would be, well, if people accuse Christians from taking this idea from Greek paganism, why is a Jewish scholar saying actually if you look at within our Jew Jewish books, you can find this concept. I'm going to give you another scholar. His name is Peter Schaefer and he's known as a, a renowned scholar in Judaic, scholar, um, Judaic studies as well. And this is what it says about him. He's a dean of faculty at Princeton University. So it says, Peter Schaefer is, a, is the leading scholar of rabbinic Judaism and early Jewish mysticism in the world today. His impact on Jewish studies in Germany, Israel, and the United States has been enormous. And this is his book for everyone to see. And what does he say? His book is called Two Gods in Heaven. And he says in his book, Two Gods in Heaven, yeah. He says, the New Testament took up these traditions that exalted, that existed in Judaism and did not reinvent, but instead expanded and deepened them. The elevation of Jesus of Nazareth as the firstborn before all creation, the God incarnate, son of God, son of man, the Messiah. All these basic Christological premises are not pagan or other kinds of aberrations. They are rooted in second temple Judaism. Regardless of their specifically Christian character, this is not changed by the fact that the divine duality of the Father and Son led far beyond the New Testament to the Trinity of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, which would then be codified in the first councils of Nicaea and Constantinople. So he also goes on to say, research shows with increasing clarity that the Judaism of the first century did not oss ossify in lonely isolation and the self-sufficiency rather only through constant discourse with evolving Christianity did it become what we refer to today as rabbinic Judaism and the Judaism of early Jewish mysticism and it says just as Christianity emerged through recon recourse to and controversy with Judaism, so too the Judaism of the period following the destruction of the Second Temple was not, not, was not a Judaism identical to that of its early precursors, but instead developed in dialogue and controversy with Christianity. So the second part of what I read is that he's saying when Muslims refer to what Jews believe today, rabbinical Jews, this is not what Second Temple Jews believed in. Because we have people like Mal Monedes, I don't know you respond after this, so five minutes. is that he codified what we now call as rabbinical Judaism. So I have a scholar saying that Second Temple Judaism was very different from what we call Ju rabbinical Judaism is what we see today. And so that's why I gave these quotes as an introduction to the Trinity. And then I'm going to also expand on some of the verses within the Bible. But we have scholarly quotes who say actually the biblical model of the Trinity is taken from within Judaic sources. And I can also show other sources from Judaism sources that affirm this too. I think we need a moderator because otherwise I'm a, you know, it's, it's fair. We need a moderator, maybe three minutes. Each. I'll do my okay. introduction and then uh, yeah, take as long we as need somebody want. to moderate, maybe three minutes each or four minutes each. Anyone here, moderate? Yeah? Four minutes each. So when I finish mine first, you can start. When you start. So you will be set up and you will be done. Rahim, Rabbi Sabri Sabri, why you're really angry? Who look at me? Nisani, Yafko Okaoni. Alhamdulillah, Rani. So today is a very interesting debate with uh, Paperboy. As he said last, was last Sunday, outside the gate of uh, Hyde Park, we had a... Uh, uh, him and his friend, uh, we had a, a debate and he promised that today he's going to come back today uh, well prepared to prove the concept of Trinity. So uh, we the Muslims have been telling the Christians uh, for more than 1,000 years, 1,400 years, 
The discourse of Trinity is a fabrication, it's a concoction, it's an adulteration. So I'm going to go to the Guru's Quran first before we come to the Bible to debunk, using their Bible to debunk this myth of uh, the concept of Trinity and this uh, myth of Jesus being God incarnate. If you even go to the Quran, the, the concept of God in Islam is very simple. The Quran has 114 surahs, you call the chapters. From the first surah chapter, Surah Al Fatiha, to the last surah, Surah An Nas, 114 surah. Now, if you want to know the concept of God in Islam, you have to go to the 112 surah, the 112th chapter, which is called Surah Ikhlas. He says, Say, Kul Allahu Ahad. Say, He's Allah the one, Allah who samat, Allah upon whom all depend. Let me do what I mean. He begets not, no, he's begotten. And that is not one to like him. This is Islam. And we are telling our Christian brethren that all the prophets in the Bible were monotheists. Yeah? They all worship one God, one Lord, and they do not associate any partners with him. And that this concept of Trinity is an adulteration, a concoction. Jesus was not a Trinitarian. None of the prophets in the Bible profess to this concept. I'm going to wait for my uh, paper boy here to show me one prophet in the Old Testament who taught this concept of Trinity. So when you read the Bible here, the only verse, no, before I go to the Bible now, one more uh, verse from the Quran, if it is going to the Quran, it is mentioned in Surah Al-Nisa, chapter number four, verse number 171. Allah said, O oh people of the scripture, O oh Jews and Christians, do not go to extremes in your religion, and do not speak lies against Allah, but speak the truth. The Messiah, Isa, Jesus, the son of Maryam, the son of Mary, was no more than messenger of Allah, and his word, which he bestowed on Maryam, and the spirit created by him. So believe in Allah and his messengers. Don't say Trinity. Disease is better for you. He said, For Allah's father is one Lord. Glory, glory be to him. Far exalted is he above having a son. So, Quran is very explicit, as I said. For the one go to Quran, one more. It is mentioned in Surah Al Anbiya, chapter number 21. Verse number 25, Allah said to Prophet Muhammad, peace on him, not a messenger, the we that Allah sent before you, O Muhammad, without this inspiration, sent by us to him, that there is no God but I, therefore worship and serve me alone. And that is what all the prophets in the Bible do. All the prophets worship only one God, and they do not associate any partners with him. Now, the only cons the only verse in the Bible, as I said, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. And the only place, the only verse closest to this concept of Trinity is in the first epistle of John, chapter number first epistle of John, chapter number five, verse number seven, which says, For that for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. But if you look at the Bible here, I've got two Bibles here. It's in here in the King James Version, but in the Revised Standard Version. 32 scholars of highest eminence, Christians, chalk it out as a fabrication, as a concoction, as an adulteration. So, I'm not going to go to the Bible now. This doesn't make sense. It is utterly incomprehensible. Almighty God from the beginning told all the prophets that there is only one Lord and Him alone deserves to worship. And later on, He changed His mind, said, I'm three in one. Does it make sense? And as I said, there's not a single verse in the Bible where Almighty God in the Old Testament said He's in three in one. But instead, the Bible is replete in the Old Testament. Replete the verses where Almighty God is telling His only one Lord. Him in the we worship. For example, I'm going to go to uh, to book of Exodus. I'll start with that one. If you read the Bible, it is mentioned in the book of Exodus, chapter number 20, verse number 3 to 5. Exodus 20, 3 to 5. Almighty God said in the Bible, you shall have no other gods besides me. You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Even this verse alone is enough sufficient. 
this same message repeated in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number five, verse number seven to nine. You shall have no other God besides me. You shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. One more verse. Even in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, chapter number 34, verse number 14, Almighty God said, Do not worship any other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous, is a jealous God. So I don't know why the Christians abandon the word of God. The word of God. In the Old Testament, they'll go to Paul and John in the beginning. John 1 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. John, 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 Paul, Paul, Paul. I want you to call the word of Jesus. Did Jesus say he's God? Did he say worship me? Did he say anything about this Trinity? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God. But there are three God, one God. The Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, the Holy Ghost is eternal. I want you to quote the Word of Jesus. This Trinity, you're going to call us. I want the Word of Jesus. What did Jesus say about Trinity? Was Jesus a Trinitarian? Did he talk Trinity? And when Jesus left this world, tell me what were the teachings of the apostles. Because they taught for, they were preaching for 30 years. I don't know where you know about, uh, uh, about that. For 30 years they were preaching. I want you to tell me what were they preaching. It's in the Bible. I'm going to quote it to you. So back to you now. I want the word of Jesus. Or go to the Old Testament. Tell me, Almighty God say, is a trying God. The verse is here. Right. Not the scholars. These scholars, I don't know them. So the reason why I started with, so I start now, yeah. with scholars is because I wanted to give a foundation of what I'm about to present. Because we have to understand something called biblical hermeneutics. And what Muslims like to do, especially uh, um, Lamin, is to say, where did God say this or where did Jesus say this? They'll say, where did Jesus say I'm God? And I will say to Muslims back, if someone has to say explicitly that they are this thing, then they must discard Jesus as a prophet. Why? Because there's not one unequivocal verse, and I'll challenge Lamin to show me, where Jesus says the exact words, I am a prophet, follow me. So if he cannot show me those verse, that word, those verses in the Bible, then he must stick to his argument and reject Jesus as a prophet and then reject his Quran because that means Jesus wasn't a prophet, so he's following falsehood. And the fact that Muslims will say we follow believe in one God, this is idolatry of the number one. Why? If we go to James 2.19, what does it say? It says you believe that there is one God. Good. Even demons believe that and shudder. So what does James is telling us? The concept of just believing in one God in itself is nothing. Because would Lamin say Hebrew Israelites are Muslims? People that worship Baal, they're Muslims too. They believe in one God. No. The concept within Christianity is identifying who is the true God. The true God who sent the prophet. So he asked me about verses where uh, the God spoke about the, the Trinity or inferred it. Because what we see in the Bible is an inference. So for example, if we go to the book of Isaiah 48, and we go start with verse 12, God is speaking and he says, listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, who I call, I am he, I am the first and I am the last. We know this is God. So when we go further down into verse 17, it says, okay. uh, let me just get the verse. So when we go into verse 14, I'll start with 14, it says, Assemble all of you and listen. Who amongst them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. He shall perform his purpose on Babylon, and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. It says, I, even I, have spoken and called him. God is speaking. I have brought him, and he will prosper his way. Draw near to me. Hear this. From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. From the time it came to be, I have been there. That is God. And it says, and now the Lord God has sent me and his spirit. So if God is speaking, who sent God and who is the spirit? This is why we need biblical hermeneutics to understand the verses and the meaning of these verses. Is it?
three. So as you can see, paper boy is going to fail miserably. You can even stay here for 10 hours. He failed miserably to convince anyone about his concept of Trinity. He's not there. He called, if the man is quoting James 2.19, James was not a Trinitarian. You see, James, the brother of Jesus, who was the leader of the Jerusalem church. You see, they put James' book at the back. James is nothing to them. Instead, they are following Paul. Paul, who wrote uh, uh, half of the New Testament. The New Testament has 27 books. Paul wrote half of it. From the book of Romans to the book of Philemon. They give uh, Hebrews to him 14 books. So, as I said, James was not a Trinitarian. You should be following James. If you look at the book of James, there is no Trinity there. No, only one God. As you said, James 2 19, you believe that God is one, you do well. Even the devil believe and tremble. Show me any verse in the book of James where James is talked about Trinity, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. No, there, no, in the Old Testament, not a single verse. As I said, let's go what old, Almighty God in the Bible. Several verses is talking to them. The children of Israel were not Trinitarians. This Trinity came later on. Let's go to the Bible now. If you read the Bible, Moses, in the book of Deuteronomy, in the book of Deuteronomy 6 4, Moses said to the children of Israel, Oh, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord is one, not two in one, not three, not one and a half, but one, sorry. Moses never said anything to the children of Israel about the trying God. And if you go to the New Testament again, Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse number uh, 29. Uh, 28 to 29, it said, a man came to Jesus, as Christ and said, what is the first of all the commandments? And Jesus said, the first of all the commandments is, here or is right, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus was not a Trinitarian. Several verses in the New Testament, I'll go up to the New Testament, then we'll finish the Old Testament. You read the Bible again, several verses, God is saying, he's only one Lord. You read the Bible again, it is mentioned in, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number, 45, verse number 18. Isaiah 45, 18 says it. For this is what the Lord said. He who created the heavens is God. He who fashioned and made the earth. He founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He said, I am the Lord and there is no other. This is simple. I am the Lord and there is no other. God never changes mind. In this verse, Isaiah 45, 18, God uses, the verse uses a, a singular pronoun six times and refers to God no, seven times. I refer to God, he six times, and I one time. For this is what the Lord said. He, he who created the heaven, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He said, I'm the Lord, and there is no other. This is simple, emphatic. Back to you. Okay, so notice as well, Lamin didn't address my question, which was, show me one verse where Jesus says, I am God. Because he keeps, I'll come, I'll come uh, sorry, one verse where he says, I am a prophet. So, because I want people to understand this straw man argument that Muslims make to say, show me where Jesus said, I am God. So, if you are consistent, use that same logic to show where Jesus said, I am a prophet. So, now he wants more verse. So, I started with Isaiah, and we go to Isaiah verse 40, verse 3, and it says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So therefore, I'm going to repeat it one more time, so people don't miss what my point is. I'm going to go to the ERB this time. It says... Actually, I'll just read the King James again. So it says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And the reason why I'm referencing this is because Jesus in the book of Matthew and the book of Luke referenced this passage in reference to John the Baptist. Now if we go to Matthew 11 verse 3, it says, verse 7, as they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind. What then did you go out to see? 
a man dressed in soft clothing. Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare the way before you. So I'm going to go back to Isaiah, and so you familiarize yourself with what it says. It says, the voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And then I'm going to go to Malachi, verse 3, chapter 3, verse 1, where it says, behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. Who is God who's speaking? God is speaking. He says, behold, I will send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. So then just to conclude, if we go to the book of Luke, chapter, I believe it's chapter one, for enough time. Well, in the, essentially, I will say, in the book of Luke, it says when uh, Luke, when uh, John was named, his, the first thing he did, he went into the wilderness and he never left the wilderness. So we know John is the one in the wilderness. And when we go back to Isaiah, it says the one in the wilderness will prepare the way for the Lord. So as I said, <laughs> Pepper Boy had said, he's going to struggle, struggle to convince anyone because it is not there. Now I said, Jesus was not there. Look, my, my question is, Jesus came, when Jesus came on the came on the earth. Yeah, he had disciples. He told the disciples, what, three and a half years? He never said anything in, in any way, shape or form that is God. He never speak about this, the concept of Trinity. Yeah, he told them to worship Almighty God in the New Bible. Yes, Jesus never said, for example, I am a prophet. But he mentioned, he refers to himself as a prophet. Do you know that? Let me go. Yes. Let me go. I agree. The Bible, how many verses is saying that Jesus is a prophet? No, God. Jesus himself is. You, uh, uh, you want to be quoted? You read your Bible. In uh, Gospel of Mark 6 4. Mark 6 4. Jesus said, He said, Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town, in his own home, and among his relatives. A prophet refers to himself. This same message repeated in the Gospel of uh, Matthew, chapter number uh, 13, verse number 57. He said, Jesus, he said, they took an and they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town and his own home. A prophet referred to himself. Several verses in the Bible, Jesus referred to as a prophet. You read the Bible again. A prophet, no God incarnate. It is mentioned in the Gospel of uh, Luke, Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse number 19. He said, And what things he asked about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. A prophet, no God incarnate. For more in the Bible, it is mentioned. A prophet in Gospel of Matthew, chapter number. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 21, verses number 10 to 11. It says here that, that when he, Jesus, came into Jerusalem, uh, all, the, all the city was moved. And the multitude said, who is this? And the reply was, this is Jesus, a prophet of the Nazareth of Galilee, a prophet, no God incarnate. For more in the Bible, it is mentioned, a prophet in the Gospel of John, chapter number 6, verse number 14. It says that, and those men, when they had seen miracle that Jesus performed, said, this is of the truth of that prophet that should come into the world. I ask you, why would the people say that? This is of the truth of that prophet that should come into the world. Not God incarnate. Why? Because the Jews were waiting for the promised Messiah. Not God incarnate. Jesus never said he's God, never said what he be. But instead, Jesus said he was sent by God. He had a God. He was a God. Several of us in the Bible. Oh, let's go. Okay. My time is up now. Go. I'm going to come back. Okay. I'm going to go extensively now. Words of Jesus now. Now you cannot, you cannot do it. I'm going to your Bible. The words of Jesus. Tell you, Jesus, tell you, he had a God. He was a God. He said everyone should pray to that God. And then, and then finish this conversation. I'm going to the New Testament now. Go. So, so now Lamin conceded that Jesus never said, I am a prophet. 
he conceded that it was inferred through the verse. So now this is we go into the Christians' territory. Because now we go to the passages, did Jesus infer he was God? So now we go to the book of John. And it says, John 10, 31. And it says, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. Of which of them you were going to of which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man make yourself God. So now when you infer things, the people at the time understood what Christ was saying. So this is why the passage he gave, where he said a, a prophet is not loved in his own city, inferred that he was a prophet and he referred to other people referring to him as a prophet so now I am using the same criteria he does so now I'm giving what verses where people labeled him as inferring he was God and accusing him of blasphemy we also go to John 10 uh, John 14 9 and it says where Jesus said do you not know do you know me Philip even after a long time I have been amongst you for such a long time Anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? But the, the Bible says, it, what does it say? No one has seen the Father except for the Son. So if Jesus is saying, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father, what is Jesus inferring? That's why I wanted to get him on that verse, to admit that inference can also be used as a criteria. So now we have Jesus. If Jesus is saying, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. What does that mean? And we go to more verses where we see Trinitarian verses. Let's open my tablet. And also, we see in the book of uh, John as well, uh, where um, where John the Baptist says, it is he who came who was before me. But from the Bible, we know John the Baptist was born before Jesus. So why would the same person say Christ is the person that came before him? Because he understood that Jesus was a pre-eternal one. And also, just to finish off, I'll show you some verses just in terms of where Jesus said, so I just, I won't read the Bible passage, I'll do it in my next week. But Jesus says, I will raise, I will lay down my life and I will raise it up myself. But then in, uh, in Romans, it says it was the Holy Spirit that raised him. In Romans 4, it says it was, the, it was God that raised him. So was it Jesus that raised himself? Was it God that raised him? Was it the Holy Spirit? This is why we say within the Trinitarian concept that these three work as one, that Jesus had the power to raise himself up. Because what man can raise themselves from the dead? Only God can raise people from the dead. So as I said, you know, I'm laughing here because I think people boy need to go and read the Bible. You go read your Bible. This concept of Trinity, you know, I, I'm going to challenge any pastor come to Speaker's Corner. I've been coming here for six years now. I've been debunking them. No one can prove to me this concept of Trinity. You are quoting the verses. You're quoting Gospel of John, chapter number uh, 14, verse number 9. Why Jesus uh, said, uh, is, uh, I like to have said to uh, Thomas, he that has seen me has seen the Father. What does that mean? Does it mean anything? This means, let me tell, I'll tell you why. It means that I am Almighty God's representative. He's the Messiah. If you want to know about God, you cannot see God. For no one can see God and live. The Bible said that you have to come to me for me to explain to you. Now, you quoted that. You quoted, you see, Christians are very crafty preachers. They go to verse number 9, 14 now. Why can't you start from verse number 1? To put the context. Gospel of John, please, please. Gospel of John, 14, 9. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Start from verse number 1. Verse number 1, 14. Yeah, verse number 1. John 14, 1 said what? You know what he said? Jesus said to the disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Straight from verse number 1, he made a distinction. Who is God there? Can you believe it? Before he was to verse number two, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Before he go to two, three, four, up to nine, verse number one. Simple. Explain that to me. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Distinction between the two. You cannot anywhere until you go to, I'm ready for you. You quoted John, John 10, 31. The Jews were kissing him. 
Start from verse number 30 and go up to, up to 35. Put the context. This is the thing. But I said, Jesus is telling them here, look, if you read the Bible, Jesus said he had a God, he was a God. I'm, I'm asking a Christian, if Jesus is God, Gospel of Luke, chapter number 6, verse number 12, they said that Jesus went out into the mountain and started to pray and continued the whole, whole night praying to God. Who was he praying to? I want to attest that. You know, I'll be attesting yours. Attest that. When Jesus went out into the mountain to pray and continued all night in How prayer to God, pray? who was he praying to? How did you pray? Also, Jesus said, Jesus never said worship him. Not there. But he said, worship Almighty God. That means that you're going against the word of Jesus. You read the Bible, it is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 4, verse number 8. Worship the Lord your God. No. Matthew 4:10. Matthew 14, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Jesus said it. He never said worship me. This same message is written in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verse number 8. Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. I mean, you're going against the word of Jesus. You read the Bible again. Jesus said, the true worshippers. Worship Almighty God. This is incredible. Read your Bible. Gospel of John 4.23. John, you love. What he said? He said, he said, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship Almighty God, the Father, in spirit, for the Father seeks so to worship Him. So Almighty God seeks who? The true worshipper to worship Him. So if you are not a true worshipper, if you are a true worshipper, you wouldn't worship Jesus or anything. You worship Almighty God alone. We, the Muslims, worship the Creator, Allah. We don't worship the creation. This concept of Trinity is a fabrication, it's a concoction. So go one more again. Right. Yeah, so no, now no, he no, asked no, me the question: If Jesus was praying to God, who, if Jesus was praying, who was he praying to? So I'll answer that with a scholarly quote, and I'll go to the Bible. No, no, go, go to the Bible. Scholarly, yeah. I don't want any scholar. Yeah, Stick to the scripture. This is my, this is my, oh, God, my answer. So give me a few minutes if I go. So, so uh, Daniel Boyeran, he says, early Judaism understand this uh, go on. it says there was no sense so this is talking about two gods so it says early judaism understood this portrayal and its rationale talking about two yahweh it says there was no in the, there was no sense of a violation of monotheism since either figure was indeed yahweh there was no second distinct god running the affairs of the cosmos during the second temp, second temple period Jewish theologians and writers speculated on an identity for the second Yahweh. Guesses range from a divinized human from the stories of the Hebrew Bible to exalted angels. These speculations were not considered unorthodox. That acceptance changed when certain Jews, the early Christians, connected Jesus with this orthodox Jewish idea. The reason why I brought up this and that the Jews didn't believe in two distinct Yahweh's but one, because if we go to Genesis 19.24, it says, The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zor. Then the Lord, it says, let me, I'll use God's name, it says, Then Jehovah rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire from Jehovah out of heaven. But if there's one Jehovah, how come there's one in Jeho one on earth and one in heaven? So this is why this, uh, this scholar is telling you within uh, Second Temple Judaism, they read the, uh, the book of um, Genesis in their Hebrew language and understood there was two distinct Yahweh, but they didn't believe in two distinct gods, but they inferred who the second person was. So when Christ came and understood that passages where Jesus is saying he's the free eternal one, they, the Christians connected that with Jesus. Because remember, the criteria was not to say explicitly, because he cited the criteria of saying things can be inferred. So therefore, I've even given you a passage where it shows there was two distinct Yahweh's. He's saying it's two gods. Doesn't matter. We go with what the Bible says and we use biblical hermeneutics and we understand that there is no one apart from the Father. So therefore, even when we go into uh, Jewish traditions, there was a concept of binitarianism where they understood that there was two distinct Yahweh's and that one, uh, one was on earth at certain periods. This is what we call... Um, what the name? Uh, the theophany, sorry. And the other one was in heaven. So I would like Lamin. When I'm to talking, you disturb me. You disturb my memorization. I know. You, yeah, you disturb my memorization. One that was yeah. in heaven and one that was on earth. What is Because if he says it's two Yahweh, that goes with what our belief is. Because that means we're showing passages where there was two distinct Yahweh's. If he says it's two God, that's up to him. But that doesn't negate what we believe in. You know, you know I'm laughing here. 
You see, my my neighbor, okay, 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 you couldn't move here, you're disturbing me. Just we're debating. If you talk, you disturb my, you know, what, you know, yeah. Yeah. So, you see here, my neighbor, Christian neighbor, uh, his name is James, he's going to laugh at you. He's going to laugh, he said, there are two Yahweh's. You are blaspheming. And I'm telling you, why didn't God in the Old Testament say, there are two Yahweh's? Now, what I want you to know, know the Christians, you go to the New Testament, John Paul. I want you to go and tell me, what did God say about, what are the God's attributes in the Old Testament? He's not quoting them. Let me quote a few of them. I've quoted this extensively here. If you read the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, again, which is Rob, Isaiah 43, 10 to 11, God said, you see, before me, no God was formed, no shall there be any after me. I am the Lord, besides me, there is no Savior. Are you telling me God changed his mind? Besides me, there is no Savior. He said Jesus is God and he's no Savior. He has said he's only one Lord and besides him there is no Savior. You read the Bible again in the book of Isaiah, which you love again. Chapter number 46, verse number 9. God said, remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. You go to the Quran and say, Let me kullahu kufan ahad. That's how I quoted the 112 surah Quran, surah Iqlas. There is no one like him in your Bible. How can God say he's not a man? You know that in the Bible? Hosea 11, 9. For I am God and not man. Hosea 11, 9. Emphatic. God is not a man. Almighty. Aki, Aki, please. Man. Could you stand here? Because I disturb you, stand here. I, I've done, you know, you are disturbing my memorization. If you talk, you disturb the, you know, please. So, several verses in your Bible. Almighty God is the only Savior. You read your Bible again. In the book of Isaiah again, 45, 21. It said, and there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is no besides me. Turn to me and be saved. All the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. There is no other. There is no other. Why is the Trinity? Several verses in the Bible. Isaiah again, I'm going to. Isaiah 40, 25. God said, to whom will you compare me or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. You cannot compare him to anybody. You say Jesus and Almighty God co-equal. Jesus said in the Gospel of John 14 to 18, my father is greater than I. Why is called equality? In your Bible, in the first Corinthians, is there. 11 3. What did he say? The head of Christ is God. Who is the head of Christ? God. How are they equal? Tell me. Co equal, co eternal. He said, G I want you to call the words of Jesus. Did he say anything about Trinity? He said, Trinitarian. Did he say he's God? Did he say, Worship me? He's calling God my God. According to you on the cross, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? Is there. Gospel of Matthew. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verse number 46. Ela, Ela, Lama, Sabadi. Oh my God, oh my God, why has that forsaken me? And in the Bible, you know God, Jesus said he had a God in your Bible. It is mentioned in Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse number 17. Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and say to him, I am ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Right. Right. And we'll conclude in Old the, Testament, in, I want to know, what did God say by right. himself? They can't. So now, uh, let me quote the verse where, in Isaiah where God said there was no saviour beside me. But when we go to the book of Titus, it says, Simon Peter, Simon, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours and by the righteousness of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So we see, if there is no uh, a Saviour apart from God, why is Jesus being called the Saviour? That's a logical question. Now, also, we spoke about what other people were calling him. Didn't Thomas say, my Lord, my God? What was Thomas talking about? He's calling Jesus his Lord and his God. So, Lyman also didn't address the question why I said, why is it in Genesis 19:24 to Yahweh? Unless he can answer that question, that goes with the Christian concept. Because I said, you're hermeneutic. We read the Bible and we, we accept everything that it says. And also, we go to the passage of a parable of the vineyard. And that's in Mark. So it says, Mark chapter 12, because we, we agreed that we can infer. So it says, then he began to speak to them parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug out a pit for a wine press and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to, a, to tenant farmers and went away. At harvest time, he sent a slave to the farmer to collect some of the fruit. 
of the vineyard from the father, from the farmers, but they took him, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent another slave to them, and he hit them on the head and treated him shamefully. Then he sent another, and he killed that one. He also sent others. They beat some, and they killed some. He still had one to send, a beloved son. Finally, he said to him them, saying, they will respect my son. But those tenant farmers said amongst themselves, this is the hare. Come, let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him and threw him out the vineyard. Therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the farmers and give the vineyard to others. Haven't you read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This came from our Lord and is a wonder in our eyes. Because they knew he had said this parable against them, and this is the Pharisees, they were looking for a way to arrest him. But they were afraid of the crowd, so they left him and went away. So in this parable, we have the owner of the vineyard. And this is a parable about God sending prophets to Israel. And at the end, what does it say? It says, if I send my son, not another slave, not another worker, but my very own son, the hare, and he was killed. So who was it killed in the Bible? It was Jesus Christ. Who was the kingdom taken away from? It was the Jews and given to the Christians. You see, as I said, so I would like to answer. That, that, that's, uh, that, that's, I mean, just that, one question. That's what I'm Who saying. Was the son? No, that's what I'm saying. You see, you see, they only go to the Old Testament obscure verses, which you know, if, if anyone can interpret anyhow they like. You know, the word of Jesus is not in there. What I'm saying, he went to Titus. Who wrote Titus? That was say your Pauline Christianity. You going to Paul? I want clear cut, emphatic verses from the Bible where God speaks about this Trinity. You remember last Sunday? He said today you're going to be fully prepared, fully prepared, but you are ill prepared. Go to the Old Testament and God himself said he's a trying God. You can't unless you tell him that God changed his mind because the Bible said God doesn't change his mind. You know that? Malachi 3 6, God said, For I, the Lord, I do not change. He does not change his mind. Similar to six repeated in James 1 17, God doesn't change his mind. In the book of Psalms 55 19, God doesn't change his mind. In the first Samuel 15 29, God said he doesn't change. He's not going to change. He remained the same. I want to emphatic, you are not going, you are going poor everywhere, obscure verses. Call to me a verse where Jesus speaks about this concept of Trinity. Yeah, you are a Trinitarian because it's a made up concept. He has got nothing to do with the prophets in the Bible, nothing to do with Jesus, nothing to do with the, 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 the 12 disciples that Jesus taught. It's a concoction. I'm asking you, when Jesus left this world, you know, the disciples were preaching. What did they preach? I'm asking you. What did they preach? You know, if you read the book of Acts there, the Bible they believe in. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse number uh, 42. It says, day after day, from temple, from temple to temple, and from house to house, they, the disciples, never stopped preaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah, translated the Christ. That's what I was telling you, Jesus was the Messiah. Yeah, sent to the children of Israel. We, the Muslims, are trying to reason with you. Your Bible, Hosea, Hosea, uh, uh, as I one eighteen said, come and let us reason together, says the Lord. We are reasoning with you. Jesus never said he's God, never said was he peace. He said, was he almighty God? In fact, do you know that we call this all the time, he dies, John 17, 3. Jesus said, the only true, says what he said, who is the only true God, almighty God? Explain that to me, Jesus. Tell the disciples, and this is eternal life. This is eternal life that they might know that you are the only true God and Jesus Christ, who you are sent. Who is the only true God? Tell me. This is plain English. Only true God. I want you to address that. Can you address that? Words of Jesus about this concept of Trinity. Go to the Old Testament. I want you to go to the Old Testament. Where God says, trying God, you cannot find it. If you read the Bible, Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse number 40, which you believe in, when his enemies wanted to kill him, what did he say? John 8, 40, he said, but now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I have from God, with God. Are you telling me Jesus is a liar? Or oh, you know Jesus better than Jesus? He said he was a man, and he has told you the truth, which he had from Almighty God. Furthermore, in the Gospel of John, which is love, John, 842 what did jesus said he said if god were your father you would love me for i have come here from god 
I have not come on my own. God sent me. Can you explain? It's emphatic. I'm quoting Claire verse to you. God sent him. He did not send himself. Then how can he be God himself then? Right. This is what the, the, God, this is the pro, okay, go on, go on. Right. So he's saying now, how can God uh, send God? I gave him the verse in Isaiah where God said, I've been sent by God and the Holy Spirit. He never addressed that verse. This is why Christians don't have a problem because this is why we believe in the Trinity because he didn't address why did God say I have been sent by God and his spirit. So if Jesus is saying I have been God, that goes in line with the verse in Isaiah. So we accept it and we affirm those verses. And that's why, again, he didn't address the verse of Genesis 19:24. How can Jehovah be on earth and in heaven? Because it explicitly said, uh, Jehovah reigns from heaven, sulfur and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. So therefore, that goes with the Trinitarian belief. He never just, he said two gods. But again, that doesn't disprove what we believe. We affirm everything that says that is said in the scripture. Also, I said uh, in the book of Malachi, where it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. What does that mean? That is a clear-cut verse. God saying, there's going to be a messenger, and I am coming. I'll repeat it again. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. So there's a clear-cut verse, but he's not dealing with that. He's saying, well, going to other passages. But the thing is this. He's saying, well, where did Jesus, God say, I'm a trinity? But he agreed. He, he understood and acknowledged in the beginning. When I asked him, where did Jesus say, I'm a, I'm a prophet? He said it can be affirmed. So therefore, I I'm giving you verses that infer this, and this is why I can go to scholarship and tell you when they do their research, they uh, have affirmed that Christians didn't even take their beliefs from, uh, you know, Greek paganism or philosophy. They took it from the Jewish scriptures, and this is what we find with, within a Second Temple discourse. So clearly, we see many statements by Jesus. We see Thomas saying, my Lord and my God. And also, Lemon uh, mentioned John 73, where he says the only true God. So we Christians affirm there is only one God, but we also affirm that there's per three distinct persons. So in terms of the only true God, if you look at the context, he's saying that you, he's speaking to the Jews, that you may know the only true Father. But hold on, if they are Jews and they already worship God, shouldn't they know God? So therefore it goes against the argument because the Jews who were worshipping God would have claimed that they already, already knew God. So God is speaking in, a, Jesus is speaking in a wider context to distinguish between false gods and the true God. Not, it didn't say there is an only God, the Father is the only God ruling out anything else. So this is why he tried to say that we try and distort the verses, but it's the same book of John that says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. So if the same writer is writing those same passages, why is he going to start with that passage to say the word was God as well? So, so, so what is happening? No, 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 yeah. So as I say, paper boy, I asked to go to the Old Testament, show me a verse where God himself speaks about this concept of Trinity. Three distinct persons. Your Bible says proof all things. First Thessalonians 5.21. Yeah? Proof all things. Quran said, Hatu Burhanakum. Uh, could you use your proof in Kundum We're debating. If you're truthful, I want your proof. You're going to the scholars, you're going to obscure verses. Quote one verse, where God speaks. This cause of eternity passes, 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 substance is not there. Jesus being fully God, fully man is not here. It's not in the Bible. You believe in that? So my question with you, where is Jesus now? I'm asking you. I want to interact with you. Where is Jesus? In heaven. In heaven. Yeah. Jesus is in heaven. But you believe in the, the Father is God, the Holy the Son is God, and the Holy is God is God. But there are no three God, one God. Is there only one God in heaven? Is there only one God in heaven at the moment? We believe there's one God in essence. What but in heaven? In, in heaven, in heaven. Only one God in heaven. But we are told that Jesus is seated at the right heart of mighty God. I'm asking you, who is the mighty God? You're going to address this. But this is very important. Our, our belief is very, is, is as clear as they like. Almighty God is one Lord, Allah. Him alone created everything. 
him you don't desire to worship you are worshiping the father the word and the holy ghost and god. this it doesn't make sense now you are saying three you, you you believe only one god you muslims say we have three gods only one god they tell me all the time Ma ask you where is jesus he said he's in heaven where in heaven the bible said if you read the bible several verses but called gospel of luke chapter number 22 verse number 69 said that jesus is seated at the right hand of the mighty god in heaven now who is the mighty god in heaven who is jesus explain that because we can wrap up because this is very important in heaven now in heaven now i want to know explain three to me trinity and where is the holy spirit in heaven they said jesus is seated will be seated at the right hand of the mighty god in heaven if you can explain this thing to me then then it, it can convince me because it's supposed to be one not three gods but the verse said he will be he will be seated at the right hand of the mighty god mighty god in heaven who is this mighty god that jesus is seated at? just address this let me see because it's very important and also when it when you finish that i want you to go to verse where i conclude that i'm oh, sorry we'll conclude that the last one was here after this yeah yeah okay so if you if you do yeah if you do if you i want you to i'm coming here yeah yeah i want you to address this very important because everybody we muslims are telling you if jesus if there is only one god yeah when jesus was on the earth he said oh jesus uh you know he humbled himself he emptied himself that's why he's prayed to almighty god yeah but he's you know in heaven now he is god he's one god they're telling me so i'm going to in heaven is jesus god in heaven and explain when the verse said he's seated at right hand of the mighty god uh, unless you tell me jesus the mighty god sitting is a small god sitting at the right hand of the mighty god explain that to me and also jesus put everything all his eggs in one basket he said in john 5 46 if you believe moses you will believe me for he wrote about me i want to know what did moses write about jesus because during my story for 10 years now uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers of Deuteronomy. Not a single verse where Moses speaks about Jesus being God, or because he's son of God, or crucifixion, or resurrection. Not there. But Jesus said, if you believe Moses, you believe me, for he wrote about me. So it's up to you now. Again, Lemon is after me. Come on then. I've got another one more debate there, so we've got to hurry up. Yeah, we're finished. Jason Vance. So you want to know? No, don't wait for this guy. Come, come on then. <laughs> you finished? Right. So okay. Lamin is trying to now give me shotgun questions. I started this conversation by going to Matthew 11:7 and showing where Jesus referred to John the Baptist and said, it is he who the scriptures has written about. Then I went to the book of Isaiah, where it said there'll be a person in the wilderness who prepares the way before me. God is speaking. Did Lamin address that? No. We went to Malachi, verse 3, verse 1, chapter 3, verse 1, where it says, I will send a messenger who will prepare a way before me. Did Lamin deal with that verse? No. Thank you. So therefore, he's oh, quite a shot you're, you're recording. me with question see, i gave him a verse you see, not the parable no. of the vineyard owner where the vineyard owner is sending people who will get killed who are the prophet and it says then that he sent his son i asked lamin who was the son he didn't answer it so he's asked, asking me many many questions without responding i asked him in genesis 19 24 why are there two yahweh so that would even answer his question this is why we believe in the distinction we believe in one divine essence because this is, I have a question for you because I answered your question. No, no, you didn't answer it. No, you didn't answer it. You no. asked me a short question. No, 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 no. I've been, look, 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 I've been quoting excessively look, to the band this myth of uh, uh, Trinity, this kind of Trinity. And he's going upscale verses. No, Those verses have got nothing to do with Jesus. He never mentioned Jesus, not in there. I've got one question. He's got an Old Testament, not in there. I've got one question. I've been quoting what Jesus said himself. What God said himself. You're eating into my time. So now he quoted in the book of John that says God is a spirit. So we worship in spirit and truth. No, I didn't go. I didn't, no, no, no. Listen to me. No, listen. I said, yes. Jesus now, where is Jesus? He said, Jesus is in heaven. No, I no, said, no, wait, no, 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 don't go anywhere. I'm I said, it. no, wait, when wait, you finish no, that, no, we no, finish. No, 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 no. This is very wait, important. No, 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 no. No, no, don't that. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Let, let me ask you. Let me stop exactly. Go, 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 go. Okay, because I have a question. I said we interact. It was interactive. Wait, wait, wait. I just have a question. Because the reason why I'm asking you is he said in the Bible, he said, that in the Bible, it says Jesus, God is a spirit. So my question to you, because you quoted from the Quran. What did I call God is spirit? Where? Tell me. 
from John. But I'm, I'm saying. What do you want to call? Call the vast. Yeah, fully. It's got your spirit. So we worship in spirit and truth. Yeah, so I, I my question to you is: Is Allah a spirit? No, 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 I said we come to that. Yes, sir. But I yes, ask no. you, you, yes, you didn't want to ask my question. Of your no. Question. no, no, you didn't. You did. No, 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 no. We are talking about concept yes. of Trinity. I, you said, I said, I, why is Jesus I, is in heaven? You asked me. Yes. Why is he? The Bible says he's yes. not right hand of mighty God. You, so you, explain that to me. Remember, you know that. No, no, wait, wait. You said he's Jesus. I said he's in heaven. Wait, wait. Did I say he's in heaven? Last week, paper boy. Wait, wait. No, no, but he's asking me. No, he said, oh, God, stop it. We've been for a long time. I think he's. I caught him when I had to call. Let him go. He no, no, wrapping up. I said, yeah, look, look. Let's wrap up. Listen to me. Listen to me. Uh, look. No, no, no. Wait, look. You asked me, is Jesus in heaven? I said, yes. So I'm asking you. No, no, I didn't. No, 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 no. I didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm camera. I'm I'm I didn't, no, I didn't. I didn't say. I didn't say this. You, did, I asked, you asked me a question. I answered. No, 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 no. In your no, 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 no. What did I say about that? after that? What did I say after that? Just answer. Your camera. What did I say after that? You are you are crafty. Okay, let me. You are crafty. Let me finish my point. Look, and you wrap up. Let me finish. One minute. One minute. One minute. Let me wrap. Wrap up. Let me wrap up. Look, you let can't me wrap up. Let me wrap up. No, you wrap up. I'm saying, let me. Yeah, let me. Let okay. me. You, wait, you challenged wait, me last wait, week. Wait, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. He's losing. No, wait, wait. He's losing. Let me finish. Yeah, go, go. Let me finish. Go, go. The reason yeah. you lose. Look at this guy. Is a spirit. Yeah. Is because he doesn't know. So my question is, what? if the Bible says God is a spirit, <laughs> yeah, and he he doesn't know what the essence of his God is, how can he no, tell no. us what God can or can't do? Because he knows what the problem. You finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Go, go, go. Now, Christians affirm that God. Wait, you're just let me finish. Don't jump. Look, look. He's on, he's, he's on okay. camera. Just leave him. Yeah, you know, know they will say Muslim tradition. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said move away. Yeah. They will say, look at the Muslims. Yeah, no, no. Let him finish. No, no, no. No, but it's our father called extensively. Don't disturb. You're even disturbing me. That's why I said stand this side. Just stand this side. It's better. Just stand. No, but I know. I can just hear. Everyone's doing it. I know. Just leave him. 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 Lady, lady, so, you see, what yeah. God can do. Exactly. First, establish what your God is before you can tell us what your God can do. No, 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 no. I caught a sweat. Look, this guy, I caught a sweat class. You see, I, from the beginning, I tell everybody. Huh? Paper boy challenged you last Sunday that he's going to prove to me without a shadow of that because of three days. He failed miserably. One lie. You can't call miserably. Now you're going to look. I caught a sweat class. Allah is not spirit. Do you know sweat class? Let me quote you again. Let me a kulo kufon ad, and there is nothing unto like him. You know your Bible is saying that. I told you in the book of Exodus 8:14, God said that you may know that there is no like me in all the earth. Let me kulo kufon ad. Quote it. So I don't want to talk about. You can't quote it. There, I said Old Testament. You can't quote a single verse where God speaks about Him being a triune God. You can't. I give you more time. You can't. It's not there. I quote it extensively. God in your Bible. The children of Israel, all the prophets were all Muslims. They all submitted their will to Almighty God, one Lord. Even Jesus said, in your Bible, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear a judge and my judgment is just because I seek not of my own will, but the will of him who sent me a Muslim. And he says, God, a God who doesn't know even the hour. Jesus doesn't even know the hour. I can't believe it. You haven't studied your You're going to obscure us. I'm going to clear emphatic verses to you. I'm, I'm telling you, paper boy, you come to Islam now. You've been careful. You've been coming here for a long time. Yeah? Almighty God is one Lord. Jesus never said he's God, never said worship. Instead, he's telling you to worship Almighty God. Almighty is only through God. He's worshiping, and then you are worshiping a man. Uh, you know what? You're following Paul. Paul is the one who came with this crap trap, who corrupted the of Jesus Christ. Uh, peace about him. Paul said, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth. Under the earth. Is that Philippians 2 10? Philippians 2 10. Paul. But Almighty God, emphatic, you shall have no other gods besides me. You shall make for a graven image or any life of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord, your God, I'm a jealous God. He's emphatic in the Old Testament. But why do you skip those verses? You go to John. 